a calorie deficit is key for losing body fat. If you consume fewer calories than your body expends in a day, your body burns fat for fuel. Now you may have calculated your calorie needs online and started being consistent with eating at your calculated calorie deficit. But after a few weeks, you notice no change in your body weight. What gives? In today's video, I will give you three reasons why you are not losing weight in your calculated calorie deficit and will also explain why this is not always a bad thing. First, it is important to make a distinction between fat loss and weight loss. Fat loss is the goal most people are aiming for. To get leaner while preserving the muscle you have, typically long-term fat loss is accompanied by some weight loss. But using only scale weight as a measure of progress has its limitations. Your body weight represents much more than just fat mass. Changes in muscle mass, water retention, glycogen and more all influence your body weight development. For instance, now that many people go back to the gym again after the gyms were closed, it is possible that in the first week of gym training you experience some slight weight gain. This is because your body stores more glycogen after a training break and this results in more water being stored in muscle. If you were to be overly focused on losing weight, the slight spike in body weight after getting back into training could leave you discouraged, but this is not fat gain. Also, it is possible that now you are able to regain some of the lost muscle during quarantine because you are able to train with heavier weights again. If muscle growth happens while you are in a calorie deficit, your rate of weight loss slows down since muscle of course also carries weight. There is research to support this. A group of beginner trainees lost 2.8 kilograms over a 12 week period, which is good progress but may sound slow to some people. However, if we dig a bit deeper, we can see that these participants lost 7 kilograms of body fat while gaining 4 kilograms of muscle in a 12 week period. The participants gained this much muscle because they engaged in resistance training again after having no structured training program. This is why I suggest you take more progress measures than just your skill weight while you are in a calorie deficit, because you could be losing fat in a calorie deficit but other increases in tissues like increased muscle mass could be influencing your body weight. So next to weighing yourself, I suggest you take a waist measurement every two weeks as a gauge for fat loss, track your performance in the gym as a measure for muscle development, and take progress pictures every month to see the physical changes your body is going through. These progress measures give you a more complete view of how your fat loss phase is developing. If your weight is stagnant but your waist measurements are going down and you're performing better in the gym, then it's great, you don't have to change anything about your calories, you're still progressing, but it's just not reflecting itself in your weight yet. In fact, it is possible you are gaining muscle while losing fat, which is what most people see as the ideal scenario. Now, say for example you are consistent with your calorie intake, but your weight measurements, your waist measurements, and just overall how your clothes fit is no different after a period of 3 weeks, then I suggest looking into your calorie intake. Notice how I mentioned a period of 3 weeks. Getting fat loss results takes time, so if after 1 week you notice no changes in how your body looks or in your measurements, then I suggest you stay a bit more patient, give it a bit more time, because sometimes it just takes a few weeks for the results to accumulate. But let's say that after these 3 weeks you notice no sign of progress while eating at your calculated calorie deficit. The first thing I would look into if this is the case is how you calculate your calorie intake. It is common for us to underestimate the number of calories we consume in a day. In one study, when asked to estimate their calorie intake, overweight individuals underreported their calorie intake by several hundreds of calories per day. Other research performed on dietitians found that even trained nutritional professionals underreport their calorie intake by roughly 220 calories per day. Things like added oils, sauces, and small snacks in between meals can add up in terms of calories. Say you add a dressing to your salad and one handful of nuts to your daily diet. Over a 24 hour period this may seem like a small thing that doesn't really matter much, but it can add 300 calories to your daily diet, which has an impact on your calorie deficit. Also if you look at restaurant meals if you eat out regularly, those also tend to be higher in calories than most people expect. A 2018 paper found that an average restaurant meal contains 1200 calories. So if you eat at a restaurant and you are not sure about the calorie amounts, it is possible you are underestimating the calories. I'm not saying you can't have any snacks or can't eat out, but whenever you have a snack or eat out, it is good to have a heightened awareness of how many calories you are consuming to prevent getting out of a calorie deficit. 
So now let's say you are certain that the calories of your snacks and when you eat out are under control, but you still notice no signs of progress after three weeks of consistency. If this is the case, then looking into a change in your daily calorie goal is worth considering. It is key to remember that calorie calculators found online are not 100% accurate. Typical calorie calculators provide useful starting points, but there are always individual differences that it does not take into account. Let's take my calorie calculation as an example. For people that train 3-4 to four times per week, I like to use the following calculation. Take your goal body weight and multiply it by 11-12. to 12. So if your goal body weight is 170 pounds, consume around 1970 to 2040 calories per day. As you can imagine, this is a very general formula. If you have a passive day job or all of a sudden you walk less because the weather in your area isn't as nice anymore, this can influence how many calories you need per day to lose fat. So if you have calculated your calories online and you notice no measurable progress after 3 weeks, it is possible you need a calorie reduction. Say you consume 2000 calories per day and there is no measurable progress. Aim to decrease your calorie intake by 10% and track your progress again over the next 3 weeks. If decreasing your daily calorie intake by 10% doesn't sound like something that you can sustain, you can also consider adding a 30 minute walk on a daily basis to create a larger calorie deficit that way. There is research to suggest that regular walks can also help boost fat loss. It is also possible that in the first 8 weeks of your fat loss phase you are able to lose fat well on say 2000 calories per day, but that eventually progress slows down and maybe even comes to a halt. If later on in your fat loss journey your progress measures stay plateaued for more than 3 weeks, then also here I would suggest a 10% calorie drop. So to sum up, there are 3 main reasons why you may not be losing weight in a calorie deficit. You could be building muscle, so there is good fat loss progress but it's not expressing itself in your body weight yet. There could also be calorie tracking errors with the small snacks you have or when you eat out. Double checking the nutritional values of the foods you consume is helpful in this case. And lastly, your calorie calculator simply could be inaccurate for you and a calorie reduction is needed. And that is all for today's video. I hope this was helpful for understanding why you may not be losing weight in a calorie deficit and what you can do about it. If you found this video helpful, then leave me a thumbs up. Also subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. And I hope to see you in the next video.